Good morning, church. We want to say welcome to Mercer Baptist Church. If you're a visitor with us today, we want to say uh, good morning, welcome, and we're glad that you're joining us. Church, we just know this is different. It's different times, difficult times. We're thankful that you're joining us this morning. Um, I'm going to pray. We're going to open up first in prayer, and then we're going to do communion. So if you'll get your communion cups ready, hopefully you have those ready this morning. But let's pray and ask God's blessing upon us and the Holy Spirit to be with us, no matter where you are. Let's pray that the Holy Spirit is with us, and you feel his presence, and you feel his peace. So church, let's pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, I want to say thank you for this morning. and Lord, thank you for the people that are watching and listening online. I pray no matter where we are, no matter how distant we are, Lord, you're a God of God that is beyond time and beyond space. And so, Lord, even that we're gathering in different homes and different times, maybe even listening to this later, Father, we pray, even right now, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we feel your presence, we feel your peace, we feel your comfort. 
We feel your rest. We feel you with us today. Lord, help us as we continue this service. We pray that we would speak your word. We would speak it clearly. Holy Spirit, we need your help. We, we need your guidance. We need your comfort. Father, right now we pray for anyone who is sick and being attacked with this coronavirus. We pray for complete health and life and healing upon their bodies. By your stripes they are healed, Lord. Lord, give them your comfort. Give them your peace. Give them your hope. Lord, the healthcare workers that are, that are helping tirelessly, I, I pray for their protection, a hedge of protection around them to keep them safe. Father, we have a lot of healthcare workers that we know, and we just pray your healing upon them and keep them safe, Lord. Lord, we pray for um, the people that are home, our elderly, everyone that's shut in right now. We pray that your Holy Spirit would give us peace at this time. Give us comfort, give us rest, give us your hope. Lord, that we're not alone, that you're with us. Lord, we do pray for our economy, and we pray. Lord, that you would bless us, that you would keep us, that you would always provide for us. Lord, thank you for my daily bread today and tomorrow. I know you'll provide for us. But God, thank you for taking care of us and providing for us. We do pray for our economy. We do pray for our nation and the world, Father. We're all in shutdown. Lord, we need your help more than ever. Lord, we need your help. Lord, may we draw close to you. May we draw close to you. Lord, if by chance there's somebody listening, uh, watching right now, and they don't know you as Lord and personal Savior, they're just listening to this prayer and they don't get it, I pray, even by the power of the Holy Spirit, they feel your presence. They feel your peace. Right now, just come over them and wash them with your presence. Wash them with your peace. Father, as we continue this service, I just pray that you're glorified and that we praise you. Despite our uncertain times, Lord, you're very certain. You're not shaken by this. You knew this was going to happen. You know everything about this, and you've got us. So, Lord, we want to say thank you. Thank you for protecting us. Thank you for keeping us safe. Thank you for keeping um, those loved ones that we love and we can't see. We're not around them right now. We pray your healing hand of mercy and protection upon them as well. God, I pray right now your church feels more united than ever. That, Lord, in your love, we have hope. In Jesus' name. Amen, church. Amen. Well, if you will, go ahead and get your communion cups ready. <clears throat> this is very important, church. Uh, now more than ever, uh, I believe that Jesus gave us uh, the communion or the Lord's Supper to remember him in times like these. Uh, church, we desperately need Jesus. And I think without this, we would forget Jesus at times. And so Jesus, he, he took the bread after supper. First Corinthians says he broke it. And he says, this is my body, which is broken for you. And so right now, if you have any physical ailments in your body, or if your body is not completely whole or complete, as we take this, we remember by his stripes, literally by his stripe, we are healed. And so church, if you have any ailments in your body, this is the best medicine, Jesus. It's not just a spiritual medicine, it's actually a physical medicine medicine as well. First Corinthians says you, you need to discern between the body and the blood, and we're discerning by his stripes we're healed. His body was broken, so our bodies can be whole. And so church, as you take this, remember Jesus' body was broken, so your body can be whole. Partake. Hmm. Father, thank you for sacrificing your body for me. Thank you for being beaten for me. Thank you for being crushed for me. Thank you for being wounded for me. Lord, by your stripe, I am healed. By what you've taken on your body, my body can be whole. Lord, you took my pain to give me healing. Lord, thank you. Thank you. I receive that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, church. Then he took the cup, and he said, this is the new covenant. This is going to be my blood that is shed for you. Church, Jesus Christ shed his blood to forgive you of all of your sins. And not just forgive you of all your sins, but to wash all of your sins away, white as snow. So we have no more condemnation. We have no more guilt. We have no more shame. 
He wants us to remember this because so desperately we need this. The, the devil wants to come at us and say, you're still guilty. You're, you're not holy. You're not worthy enough. And Jesus says, as you take this, remember all of your sins are forgiven. So church, as we partake, remember all of your sins are forgiven. Jesus, thank you for your blood that washes me white as snow. Lord, I, I mess up so often. I know the devil always reminds me of my failures and my faults. But Lord, I want to say thank you for washing away all my sins, forgiving me of all my sins, cleansing me from all unrighteousness. Jesus, I, I want to say thank you Thank you for your completeness. Thank you for your healing. Thank you for taking away my shame, my guilt, my condemnation. Mm, thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, church. Well, we have a special guest uh, this morning. We've recorded her, and so don't worry, we're, we're not in the same room. But we've recorded Lauren for you. Lauren is going to play us a beautiful song. So I just ask you to spend this moment in worship. Jesus, uh, just think about all he's done for you. Think about all he went through for you and our hope that we have to come. So, Lauren, we want to say thank you for joining us today and uh, bless you, my sister. In Jesus' name, amen, church.
Amen, church. Amen. What an amazing song, Lauren. Hallelujah, church. Uh, we have a lot of hope, don't we? We have uh, a great future ahead of us. Despite what happens here in this world, God is for us. God is with us. He will take care of us. Man, that's an amazing song. I know Lauren's been practicing that song for literally months, if not, um, I, I don't know how long. I know she's been practicing it way before this coronavirus started. And what a very timely, timely song. And so, Praise God. You know, church, God knew this was going to happen before it happened. And uh, we need to be encouraged. God wants to encourage us. Even though we're stuck at home, He wants us to be encouraged. He wants us to have hope. The rest of the world doesn't have hope. But church, we have hope in Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, this is very interesting. This is uh, Palm Sunday. We're coming into uh, Easter week. And man, I, I desperately wish we could gather with one another. I desperately wish that we could meet together. Um, I was just thinking about this the other day. You know, the first Passover, um, they were in their own homes, and we're coming into the Passover week, we're coming into Easter, and we're stuck in our own homes. And so, church, don't be discouraged. I, I know at this time we can be really discouraged, but I'm encouraging you, God's got this. Let let's not be afraid. Let let's continue in our hope. Um, but today we're going to uh, talk about Palm Sunday, and Palm Sunday was when Jesus Christ was being ushered into Jerusalem, and as he's coming into Jerusalem, the city was all in a, a frenzy, and they were putting palm branches before him and their coats before him, and they're saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And you remember the religious leaders, they came to Jesus, and they're like, hey, make them be quiet. And Jesus said, hey, if they don't, the very rocks themselves will cry out. The very earth itself will cry out to me. Um, then this is where we're going to pick up today is turn your Bibles to uh, Matthew. Matthew chapter 21 is where we're at. Now, some people believe that this happened the very next day, but after Jesus came into the city, this is what happened. So turn your Bibles to Matthew 21. We'll go to the first slide this morning. Matthew 21, 14 to 16. It says, and the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. And when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were sore displeased and said unto him, hearest thou what these say? Jesus says, yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah. Have you never read out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected? praise. Now, this morning, as we break this down, there is an amazing promise here, an amazing promise that God offers us and an amazing promise that God uses us as well. So let's go to the next slide. Let's break this down a little bit in Matthew 21, 14. It says, and the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. Amen. And when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful, now this wonderful means wondrous, marvelous, miracle, moving a person within personally at the sight. Now in the Hebrew, it literally means to be surpassing or extraordinary, the things that he did, and the children crying in the temple, saying, Hosanna, uh, to the son of David, they were sorely displeased and said unto him, hear what they're saying here? Now church, this is what happens. When Jesus shows up, two things happen. Either you get really excited or you'll get really mad. That's just what Jesus does. When we hear the name of Jesus, people either get really excited or they get really offended. They get really offensive. They get really angry. And this is, this is what happened when Jesus came, comes into the temple. He's healing people. Folks, this is the heart of Jesus, to heal the lame, to, to heal the blind. This was his ministry. Jesus' ministry was to bring healing and life and health to the world. Hallelujah. This was Jesus' heart. And as he's healing these people, the children, it says these, these children, they, they were small. The, the, as he continues, the, the babes and the sucklings, these are, these are like children under three years old. So I don't know how old these kids were, 
but there's a whole bunch of little kids, and they're really excited that Jesus is there. And they're really excited that, that Jesus is healing people, and uh, he's doing this marvelous, wonderful thing. Now, this year, we, our theme of the year is Marvelous Mysteries. Church, how would we have known, and, and I said this earlier in the year, in order to see some marvelous miracles, some bad things might have to happen. And church, how, how bad is the things that are happening in this world? Amen. But you know, in the darkest of night, the, the smallest little bit of light really shines very, very bright, doesn't it? It does. And Jesus is shining even brighter now. But as he comes in here, he's doing this wonderful, marvelous, miraculous, and we're moved, aren't we? When Jesus shows up, we're moved. We're either moved to indignation, we're either moved to anger, or we're moved to compassion, to cry out to him. Church, I'm going to encourage you right now, if you haven't cried out to Jesus lately, I pray you do so. I don't know. We've been in lockdown for about three weeks now, and it seems like the longer we're in lockdown, the more antsy we get. Y'all, this is the perfect time to cry out to Jesus. And so he's doing this wonderful thing. So let's go to the next slide here in Matthew 21, verse 14, and let's break this down a little bit more. In verse 15, it says, And when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were sorely displeased. Now, this Hosanna means literally, save now. Save us now. Or it could mean, deliver us, um, and we're begging you to deliver us. And so when Jesus comes and he heals, we get two options, don't we? We're going to either cry out to Jesus, Jesus, save us now, or we might just get angry. And we saw that the chief priests, it says that they were sorely displeased. It, it means much grief and indignation. Man, these guys were, they were mad. They were mad that Jesus was doing this, and they were definitely mad that the children were crying out, save us. Save us, what? To the son of David. You know, these little kids were basically proclaiming, and as the people when he came into Jerusalem, this is Messiah. Because whenever we see Son of David, it really refers to the coming Messiah. It really refers to the coming King. And these little kids, they're crying out, save us now. Save us. Save us. Save us now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, this gnaw means now. These little kids are crying out, please, Jesus, save me now. You know, as I was studying this lesson this week, I even found myself crying out to Jesus. And I'm like, Jesus, now, we need your salvation now. Now, it's interesting, Jesus is going to quote a psalm here. In the Old Testament, this word, Hosanna, when it was uh, used, it was really referring to, save us now, Jesus. Like, save us, God, now. Please, hear our plea, hear our prayer, hear our petition. But then throughout history, it's, it's changed a bit from a, a prayer of petition to a prayer of praise. When they say it now, they, they literally, they, they understand that God will take care of them. God will heal them. God will deliver them. And so when they cry out, Hosanna, they're, they're literally declaring, God is going to save us. You know, sometimes when you're in trouble, you, you're like, help me. Um, and that would be kind of like the Old Testament, help me. Now, now it's more like, thank you for coming to my rescue. I know you're going to heal me. I know you're going to take care of me. But here it says, Hosanna, um, save us now, deliver us now. We're begging you now. But people were indignant. They were sorely displeased. They had much indignation. You know, the world, the world doesn't understand God. And a lot of times they think God is responsible for all the problems that are happening right now. But you know what? Jesus came to save. Jesus came to heal. But the world doesn't want to hear about Jesus. They really don't, church. Now, I don't believe the church were truly under persecution right now because there's a lot of bars that are closed. Amen? Come on. Yes, our churches are being required to keep closed, but so are the bars. Uh, so are all the, the other establishments. I, I don't think that we're truly entering into a time of true persecution for the church yet, but church, one day, and I don't know how long, I don't know how very soon this will happen, but one day we as the church will be persecuted sorely. People will be very mad as we preach Jesus Christ. As, as we cry out to him, save us now, the world won't like it. So let's go to the next slide here. We're going to go to the Psalms, 
Psalm 8, 1 to 2. Now, Psalm 8, 1 to 2 is what Jesus is quoting here in Psalm 8, 1 to 2. He says in Psalm 8, 1 to 2, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Now, I love how it says here that his name is in all of the earth, and he has set his glory high upon the heavens. You know, nothing's beyond his control, church. Nothing's beyond his, um, his ability to take care of here. And it continues in verse 2. It says, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings. And this is little children. This is, this is kids under three years of age uh, still nursing. And it says here that they have, hath ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. Now, this, this ordation or ordain literally means to set a foundation or to establish. Now, strength means might, power, boldness, or a loud praise. So he says here, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained, or hast thou set a foundation, or hast thou established strength, might, power, boldness, loud praise. Church, he's established praise. Where? In the mouths of babes. You know what the world what the world thinks um, is not what God does. What the world is expecting is not how God operates, church. God does this to confound the wise. God does this to, to make us just, just, just totally ignorant before him. But it says here, he has established this. He has ordained this strength because of thine enemies. So why is he established? Why has he established praise from the mouth of babes? It's because of the adversary. It's because of the enemy. Why? Why does he do this? Look at this. That thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. Now, this enemy is literally somebody that's evil, and this avenger is somebody who's trying to get revenge. You know, the devil is, is mad. He's mad at God, and he's trying to get back at God. He, he doesn't like God. He can't hurt God, so he tries to destroy his children. He try, tries to destroy God's creation, and, and he wants to avenge. He wants to destroy. He wants to kill. He is the evil one. And it says here that, I love this, that thou mightest still the devil, the enemy, the avenger. This still literally is the same word that um, in Genesis it says that God rested, and we remember the Sabbath, and and we rest. This is the word here in Hebrew. It means to rest, to, to re repose or rest, or to sit still, to s cause to cease. And so this is what's happening here. God is getting the enemy, getting the devil to sit still, to cease, to rest. How? Through the mouths of babes. That's awesome. So the foundation through the mouths of babes is the strength or the praise or the ability to quiet the enemy, church. So let's go back to the Matthew. Let's go back to previous Matthew verse in Matthew 21. So let's go to that next slide, Matthew 21, 14. I'm just going to reread this in light of that context. Matthew 21, 14 to 16. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and healed them. And when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying in the temple, and they were saying, Hosanna, literally, save now or deliver us, please, to the son of David. They're crying out to the Messiah. They were sorely displeased and said to him, hearest thou what these, these people are saying? And Jesus says unto them, yes, have you never read, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, thou hast perfected praise. Now, church, this is, this is pretty cool. Now, in the Greek, this Thou hast perfected, literally means uh, thoroughly, complete, repair, adjust, exactly, or you could say restored. So it says that God, have you never read that out of the, the mouths of babes, God has restored praise? Now this praise we know also is a story, a proverb, a praise of God in the Greek. 
Now, in the Hebrew, literally, remember we said ordained or the foundation, so that makes sense. It's, it's been restored, right? God has restored or made a foundation of praise. And praise is where the strength is, isn't it? Strength is in the praise. Because in the Hebrew, remember the Hebrew meant strength or loud or might or power or boldness. Church, when we are boldly, 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 hallelujah, giving God praise, hallelujah, it, it, there, that, if that's a foundation of us, that is where our strength is. And why did the psalm say that God, through the mouths of babes, why did he do this? To quiet and to still the enemy. Wow, that's so amazing. And what were they saying? What was the praise that they were doing, church? They were saying, save us now, Lord God. You know, the most perfect foundation of praise is us crying out to the Lord, Lord, save us. Save us now, Lord. Please save us, Lord. You know, the, the religious people were trying to silence the children. They were trying to silence the praise, but God says, oh, no, 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 no. Their praise will silence you. Church, regardless of what's going around today, regardless of your enemies, the Lord has established strength in our prayers, in our praise. And the praise that is foundational is Hosanna. Hosanna, Lord, save me now. Save us now. Save now, Lord. But also it's a declaration that the Lord has saved us. He has come. He has perfected praise in our prayers, church, in our acclamation, in our proclamation that he has done this for us. And it will silence, it'll quiet, it'll still any enemy. And I love this, is Jesus is using the little children to silence the religious leaders, church. What, what an opportunity that God gives to us. What an opportunity that he uses us. We're weak, we're meek, we're, we're, we don't have any power and strength in and of ourselves. And you know what? Our request to be saved, our petition to be saved to God is literally a foundation of strength to silence the enemy. Oh, church, we've got so much more power than what you know. Just your words, just your words to say, Lord, save me, can quiet the enemy, can quiet the opposition, can quiet the avenger, can, can quiet the evil in our lives. I'm going to tell you, this coronavirus is very, very loud. It's very, very loud. It's trying to silence everyone. It's trying to calm everyone. It's trying to get us to, to, to stop proclaiming the Lord Jesus Christ. But I'm going to encourage you, church, don't stop proclaiming Jesus Christ. Don't stop giving God praise through your petitions. And that is literally, save us, Lord. How much more now, church, should we be crying out to God, Lord, save us. Save us, Lord. We, I can't do it in and of myself. As a little child, he, at three years old, they cry out to their mom and they say, Mom, I'm hungry. I, I'm still nursing. If you have babies at home, you know what I'm talking about. These babies, they cry out for their mothers and they say, I need milk. I need milk. And the mother comes. Church, Jesus is relating this to us, relating to God. When we come to God, it's just like an infant. And we just cry out to him. We say, Lord, save us. Nourish us. Help us. Protect us. Just like a, a small infant would. Uh, that, that request of God to help us is a foundation of strength, church, that will quiet and silence and put the rest, the enemy. Ooh, Hallelujah. <laughs> So if you've got any noise in your life, if you've got any opposition in your life, if you've got any evil trying to oppress you in this life, including COVID-19, guys, we can silence it. We can silence it by proclaiming the foundation of strength, of praise, by saying, Lord, save us. Save us now, Lord. There's strength in that church. A lot of people don't like Christians because they say, oh, they're pansies. They they, they're always crying out to God for help. You know, they're, they're weak. 
church, our strength is in our humility. Our strength is in our desire and our, our, our hunger for God to save us. I mean, it says here that they cried out, save now, son of David. They're, they're proclaiming Jesus as the Messiah, the Savior of the world. And this is coming into Easter. This is coming into Passover. This is coming into Resurrection Sunday. This is coming into when Jesus Christ died for us. Church, church, come on. He can heal the lame. He can, he can heal the sick. God, he can raise the dead. Church, COVID-19 has got nothing on him. He can silence this in our lives if we're just screaming out to Jesus. Literally, save us now. It'll silence all the enemy in our lives. So church, I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray for us. You know, if you've never asked Jesus Christ to forgive you of all your sins, if you don't even know Jesus, as we're coming into the Passion Week, Jesus dies on the cross for you. Jesus dies on the cross to forgive you of all of your sins. You can't you can't be holy enough. You can't be good enough. You can't forgive yourself of your own sins. You need an advocate. You need Jesus. He died in your place to give you life. He did. Would you accept it today? Would you receive it today? Would you believe that he is the son of David? Would you believe that he is the Messiah that saves the world from the curse of Adam and Eve? Would you believe that? Would you cry out to him today and say, save me now oh save me now lord save me now i'm going to tell you that is the strength the foundational strength that will quiet the enemy and the evil that's going on in your life right now you know you might be addicted to drugs and alcoholism and even right now your life is ever, even spiraling out of even even more chaos because you're stuck at home stuck in depression stuck in anxiety stuck in stress you got a lot of evil, got a lot of evil that's very loud in your life. I want to encourage you, church. I'm going to encourage you right now. Turn to Jesus. Turn to Jesus. That is where the strength to quiet the enemy in our lives rests. That is the foundation of strength or praise is us crying out to Jesus. Cry out to Jesus today. Church, now's the time to be even more bold. Even now, as the world is maybe telling us to be quiet, uh, we need to be even more loud for Jesus. As they say, be quiet, we need to say, no, we're going to proclaim Jesus is our Savior. We're going to proclaim we are saved by Him and have been saved by Him, and we won't be quiet. The opposition will be quiet. Church, this is not normal. This is not the normal way to do things is to trust in God for these things, trust in Jesus for these things. Where is he now? We're stuck at home. I'm telling you, he's there. He's there even there right now with you, and I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit you feel his touch. If there's any illness in your body, if there's any sickness or disease that's coming upon you, depression, anxiety, stress, I pray right now by the power of the Holy Spirit you feel his presence, and you cry out to him, save now, Lord. I need you, Jesus. It's that dependence upon him. That silenced the enemy because the enemy wants to get you to think it's all about you and what you're doing for God. But when you turn to God and you say, I need you, God, it silences the enemy's attacks. Church, now's the time to be even more bold for Jesus. So let's not give hope. Let's not give up. Let's not give up. He hasn't given up on us. Anything that's loud in your life, it'll be silenced by proclaiming Jesus and asking him to help you. So let's pray, church. Father, I pray right now by the power of the Holy Spirit that somebody out there has never trusted you as their Lord and personal Savior, I pray. Lord, they, they believe in you. They cry out to you and they say, Save me, Lord, from my sins. Save me, Lord, from my enemies. Lord, save me now from the accuser. Lord, save me now from the avenger. Lord, save me now from corona. Save me now from the evil of this life. Save me now, Lord, save me now. The Bible promises that if you believe that in your heart and you've cried out to him, you will be saved. 
Now may the Holy Spirit that surpasses all human understanding guard your heart and your mind and flood you with His peace, His shalom, His perfect completeness and wholeness and healing. In church, even right now, we need to be more bold to cry out to Jesus for His help. We need to be even more bold to cry out, Jesus, save us from this pestilence. It will, church, quiet the attacks, the emotional attacks, the physical attacks, the mental attacks that are going on in our lives. We just need to cry out, Jesus, save me. And it will quiet the enemy attack in your life. It will. It has for me and it will for you. Because our God is real and our God loves us. So church, I want to encourage you as we come into this Passion Week, pray for one another. Just because, you've probably read this, just because the church isn't gathered doesn't mean that Easter's canceled. You know, he's risen, amen? He is risen indeed. This is not catching on off guard. But as we come into the Passion Week, just know that as all the Israelites, they huddled together in their own homes while the death angel passed over, we too will be saved. And this will pass over us. So church, just keep loving on one another. Keep praying for one another. Keep reaching out to one another. Now we're going to end in some worship again. And uh, I just want to say thank you for joining us. But church, God's got this. And all the evil, all the loud in the world will be silenced with our, our proclamation, our, our uh, prayer, and our petition to the Lord to save us. Amen, church. Amen. Thank you.